Oil soaks sand, removed from Singapore's beaches, following the June 14 oil spill, is being treated and may be used to fill sandbags for flood control, said a representative from one of the several waste companies appointed to treat the oily sand. Ms. Ernie Mosnita Mohamed Anis, Sales and Business Development Manager at Mencas Offshore and Marine, said tests will be done on the treated sand to assess its safety, but the final decision on what the sand will be used for depends on its owner. The sand treated by Mencast is from East Coast Park in Sentosa Siloso, Tanjong, and Palawan beaches. It is not clear what will happen to treated sand that does not pass inspections. Ms. Ernie was speaking to the Straits Times on June 21 during a media visit facilitated by the National Environment Agency NEA to a treatment facility. She said that the oil content in sand contaminated from the recent spill ranges from 2 to 5 percent. For the sand to be considered successfully treated, the oil content has to drop to about 0.1 percent. Treated sand, despite being safe to touch, may still appear to be stained black. Miss Ernie said it cannot be restored to its original white coloration. So far, about 140 tons of oil soaked sand have been collected by Mencast, she said. Minister for Sustainability and the Environment Grace Fu said in a Facebook post on June 20 that over 71.000 kg of sand were scooped up from Sentosa's beaches alone. On June 14, the Netherlands flag dredging boat Vox Maxima hit the stationary Singapore flagged bunker vessel Marine Honor at Peza Panjang Terminal, which resulted in a 400 ton oil spill that has since tarred the beaches of Singapore and Malaysia. Intensive cleanup efforts have been underway, though eliminating all traces of the low sulfur oil spilled may prove to be a long term undertaking. Despite a week of cleanup efforts, the foreshore in East Coast Park remains marked by streaks of oil on June 20. To clean up a contaminated beach, workers don personal protective equipment, including safety boots and 95 masks and gloves, and work in pairs to shovel oil salt sand into black trash bags. It is backbreaking work, with each person handling dozens of bags, weighing approximately 4 kilograms each all under the hot sun. To quicken the process, larger piles of sand are dug up using excavators to be bagged later. Once sufficient bags of oil soaked sand have been collected, they are put into a wheel loader, a four-wheel machine designed for lifting, and then transferred into a skid tank. The tank, which is attached to a hook lift truck, allows for waste to be transported to toxic industrial waste facilities such as Mencast. Ms. Ernie said treatment efforts at the Mencast plant began on June 20. The skid tanks were deployed to beaches on June 17 and have since been depositing the collected sand at the plant. Also, sand, first backed by NEA-appointed contractors at the various beaches, must be unbagged manually at the Mencast facility before the start of the treatment process. Workers wearing gloves, goggles and work boots must physically cut through such bags to feed the contaminated sand through the facility's treatment systems. Large plastic and wood sediments are also removed during this process to be incinerated. As at June 21, about 30% of Mencast's workforce, comprising about 60 people, have been allocated specifically to waste processing efforts following the oil spill. Sand samples are also taken to the laboratory for contaminant testing to determine the required treatment temperature and duration. The contaminated sand is then transferred to a shaker system, which filters out coarser debris, such as rocks and plastic shards, from the sand to be compressed. This is so that the particles are the same size as the sand grains. To ensure that all the oil can be effectively vaporized during treatment, the oil soaked sand is then sent to be heat treated. To date, 
About 12 tons of contaminated sand have been processed through the facility's anaerobic thermal desorption unit ATDU. Here, all soaked sand is heated in a rotating drum at approximately 600 degrees Celsius, turning contaminants such as oil into vapor after about 45 minutes. The ATDU system can treat up to 60 tons of sand a day. Treated sand is then stored and tested for further contaminants. Mencas reports that for sand, which has about 2 to 5% oil content, the treatment will bring the oil content down to about 0. 0.1%. It said the treated sand will be assessed for future potential use, such as for filling sandbags for flood control. It is, however, dependent on analysis and tests which have not been finalized yet. In addition to discussions with owners of the sand as to what should be done with the treated sand, it added. Oil retrieved from the shore may also be recycled and blended with Menka's existing resources as recovery oil, which is sold to oil traders. Still, the treatment of oil soaked sand is essential, regardless of its final outcome. If disposed of without proper treatment, oil soaked sand remains harmful to the environment. That's why we are here. Anything that is contaminated with oil is toxic and has to be treated in a proper manner, Miss Ernie said.